So now we're going to get into some of those memorable looks in addition to the actresses. So the icons and their most memorable looks. So let's get into first Marilyn Monroe. In her 1953 film, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, that iconic pink dress. You know, the pink dress, strapless, straight down, the arm length gloves, the diamonds on her neck, bracelet. We remember this design. As soon as we close our eyes and we think about Marilyn Monroe, we think about two looks. We think about her, that white dress when the wind blows up, and we think about her in this pink dress. This was a satin gown, and we'll get into who was responsible for creating the look for this gown in a few slides, but this is one of her most memorable pieces, that iconic pink dress. The next we have Grace Kelly in her 1954 film, To Catch a Thief. And what I she had several really iconic looks from that movie, but one of the most uh, memorable ones to me was this white gown that she wore inspired by Madame Grace. And we're going to get into exactly some of the features of that gown. Also, so again, if you were not yet able to go back and take a look at fashion history, I definitely encourage you to do so so that you can learn more about the designers, especially one that we covered called Madame Grace. She was known again for creating these beautiful draped elegant designs and this was similar to what Grace Kelly wore in that iconic shot that I have in the notes in um, To Catch a Thief. She had this pleated gown and it had the cross sections and it was very drapey and elegant and structural. That was similar to the style and gowns that Madame Grace created these very Grecian goddess inspired dresses. So that was one of the looks that Grace Kelly wore in that movie. The next actress that I decided to cover was Dorothy Dandridge. In her film, the 1954 Carmen Jones. She has another memorable look, not as glamorous as the previous actresses that we covered, but her look is iconic because it's so simple. Because when you think about these two colors and the dress combination, you immediately think of Carmen Jones. Now what this look consisted of was a red pencil skirt coming a bit high-waisted. You had the black off-the-shoulders blouse, that single flower in her hair, this very tightly curled updo. And depending on what shots you catch her, I do believe she was barefoot in a lot of the shots that were taken of her during that time. It's an iconic look because it's both simple yet it makes a huge statement. It goes, the red sort of indicates her boldness and the character's boldness and the off the shoulders, her sensuality, both things that she used a lot in the movie. I do give a brief summary of what the movie was about, so I definitely encourage you to read up on that. But this look, like I said, was not as glamorous as the other looks that we've covered so far, but it was iconic because of its simplicity and how much it complemented the character itself. The next look is obviously I had to include Audrey. Audrey Hepburn in the 1961 film Breakfast at Tiffany's. We've seen this look done over and over and over. We sort of know without even being told what this Breakfast at Tiffany's look looked like. Um, but obviously I had to make sure that I added it in here because you cannot do an iconic memorable moment segment without including Audrey Hepburn and her Breakfast at Tiffany's performance. So what were some key features of that design? When I think of that design, I think a lot about Coco Chanel. She was sort of one of the originators of this very chic yet simplified design look. Again, she was the or originator of the LBD, the little black dress, and that was definitely one of the pieces that Audrey Hepburn wore in the film. When she's at that mirror, you see her in that very simplistic black dress. She's draped in diamonds. Uh, she has the tiara diamond, the bracelet. That's a very iconic scene from the movie. She has the black arm link glove. So arm link gloves, again, were another feature of that old Hollywood golden age Hollywood design. The opulent gloves that went above the actress's arm. We had the pearls were another key feature in that. I do believe, again, when she's at the window. So there's one where she's like 
and I have both those pictures in the notes. There's one where she's like from the neck up and then you see her with the diamonds and the tiara. And there's another one where I do believe she's by the window and they have the back view. And she has these enormous pearls hanging from the back of the dress. I did think that it was connected to the dress. It was a part of the dress. But as you'll see, the dress was separate. So the pearls were added as an accessory once the show, once the movie was being filmed, but it is not a part of the dress, which I was very surprised to see. I also wanted to cover Josephine Baker in her 1934 film, Zuzu. Again, I go into a little bit more detail about what that film was about. It was a silent film, but she captured, it was two very um, alluring things about her participation in that film. And one of them were the fact that obviously she was an African-American, not African-American, a French-born black actress. So that obviously would stand out on screen. She played a role that wasn't in a supporting character role. She actually played a more prominent role in the film and she was able to get as just as glamorous as some of her other co-stars. I included a picture of an iconic look from that movie and you have the feathered off the shoulder gown, the long sleeve sequin gloves that she had in that film, and the very close to the face hairdo where the hair sort of like slipped on its face. And that was a very prominent style as well in the 1920s and the 1930s. So she carried some of those key features from that time as well. Now we'll go into Miss Anna Mae Wong. She was a Chinese actress who was a part of the film, The Shanghai Express from 1932. She, there weren't a lot of images that I can find of Anna Mae Wong specifically from this film. She was a supporting actress. She had a couple of scenes where I was able to sort of pick from and allow to post for you guys to see. A lot of Anna Mae's other images come from a variety of movies and publicity shoots. So I wasn't able to get too many from the actual movie itself. But she was, again, similar to Josephine Baker in the fact that her ethnicity and her being a part of these films made her stand out. She was also a quite excellent actress. So I was able, again, to just pick out one or two images from her participation in the film. What attracted me to her was the fact that she was a Chinese actress participating in a film. I don't think in the 1930, 1932 that was fairly common. Also that they kept her authentic to the character. So they didn't try to make her character more mainstream or streamlined. They kept her, well maybe because she was a part of a, the Shanghai Express kind of gives you the insinuation that it was something that was more oriental. But they kept her, they left her hair very long. They kept her makeup very striking and very close to the traditions of the Chinese and Asian culture.